Hi, everyone. My name is Tanner, and welcome back to another episode of the Man to Man Coverage Podcast. Today, with my good friend and co host, Mason. What's up, guys? And before we jump into today's episode, I just want to say thank you so much for all the recent support on past episodes. The show's been doing really well. And I want you all to tell us what we what you think of the Zoom format. I really like it, but if you all want something different, let me know. And I will say this. We are trying to have some new stuff on the show. I don't want to say what exactly because it is not a guarantee. But if it does happen, it will be really awesome. With that being said, as you can see, I'm wearing blue and Mason has a, some blue lighting going on because we are recapping the NFC um, today, which is blue. So <laughs> um, last time we did the AFC. So jumping into NFC, we'll start with the NFC East, or as it was nicknamed this year, the NFC Least. The first team we have is the Cowboys. Cowboys had a very unique season. Start off, looks like their defense was um, bad, but their offense was great. Like most Mike McCarthy teams, that's usually the case. Uh, defense is atrocious, but offense can put up points. And I thought they were a very fluid team. But then their quarterback, Dak Prescott, got hurt. And it was really bad. I'm an Eagles fan, but I've always liked Dak Prescott. I like his character. And it was really tough to see that happen. And then after that, things just kind of went downhill. Um, Andy Dalton played below my expectations. I thought he would do a lot better, but he kind of underperformed. The offense was fun to watch. CeeDee Lamb is an exciting player, and these receivers can make great catches. But overall, I think there's some questions, and then there's some questions that got answered. First of all, Zeke really fell down, and I feel like we'll see where he goes. And I think this also showed of how good Dak is that the Dak has some ability. So if the Cowboys can fix the defense, that'll be great. Uh, Mason, what do you have to say against Dallas? A very odd season for them. Um, yeah, I think Dallas had a very unique year because they have the new coaching staff. Um, my personal opinion, I did not like Mike McCarthy at all this year, but I do think it's a new team, so you can't really judge him too hard. I, I would give him another year or two to really um, – develop his team and really see if he's the right guy but he did some really questionable uh play calling and overall just like decisions this year like I for example the Thanksgiving game he had some terrible uh fourth down attempts where it was like fourth and 11 and this dude ran a fake like a rever a fake punt and it was like a reverse sweep where you throw the, the the ball 10 yards back and the guys run 20 yards for a first down which is absolutely a terrible play but um Dak Prescott going down really defined their season, in my opinion. They lost him, and then it just, like, they didn't have any hope after that. Andy Dalton really didn't perform that amazing. Um, but I, the offense was really fantastic in those first couple of weeks. The defense, atrocious, got a little bit better uh, towards the end there. Um, but, no, really Dak Prescott going down kind of defined their uh, year. And I'm, I hope he comes back to the Cowboys. I really want to see what that team can do with Dak healthy for all 16 games yeah i totally forgot about that thanksgiving game but then when you brought up that one play i was like oh my god was terrible <laughs> um, <laughs> the cowboys did have some fun games this season like that shootout with the browns was fun they had that falcons comeback which was fantastic um and a couple of division games was fun as well um if i'm them i'm trading ezekiel elliott for a defensive player like i i'm trying i i I'm trying to think of a realistic trade that could happen, but uh, Mason looks like he's a fan of that. Um, like, who's a yeah. running back needy team? Maybe, I don't know, like, if the Dolphins want him, the Dolphins, I feel like, could give up some pieces. I don't know who they would, but a team like that. But, Mason, you seem on board with that idea. No, I completely agree with that. I think he's he's overpaid and he's not producing, like, the Zeke Elliott we know, and – that team has a lot of money going to a lot of players, and I think you got to free up some cap in order to bring in defense because you already got a stellar offense. And Tony Pollard, when he played this year, he actually showed flashes of being like a quality starting running back, and you're not going to have to pay him like, what is it, $13, $15 million a year like uh, Zeke is getting. Yeah, uh, well said. I think that's all I have to say about the Cowboys. I think they 
I think you're high on them for next year. I could see them eight, nine wins. I just don't like this coaching staff at all. Next up, we have the Eagles with <laughs> oh no, uh, this yeah, oh no's right. That perfect <laughs> this team. Um, it's hard to kind of do a recap with this because I talked so much about them since I'm an Eagles fan. What I'll say is is that ever since this team won the Super Bowl, progressively they've been going downhill. I felt like this was the year where it just exploded. And after they won the Super Bowl, they've done a lot of bad things. They've kept a lot of coaches who should not have been kept, and they paid a lot of aging veterans, and they haven't drafted well. So those three factors were just compacted into this season, which was so terrible to watch. The 2015 Eagles season with Sam Bradford and that team is still worse than this one, <laughs> but this <laughs> one gives us some competition. So messy. I love the Doug Peterson firing. Um, I know that there was not a lot of talent on this Eagles team, but the play calling was just sort of disorganized here, there. Everyone was just everywhere. It was so stale. I like Jen Hurts. I know you really like him too. Um, both of us really like him. I thought he was very good. The Cardinals game, he was great. That Saints game, he was good. Towards the end, I think defense has started to figure him out, but I really like him, and I th- I think that this Eagles team with Nick Sirianni, if they can draft well, can be a team that starts the the rebuild phase off on the right foot. So that's what I have to say about the Eagles. Um, My personal opinion, I really felt like the Eagles disappointed this year. Um, Obviously, it's why they have a six overall pick. But I think it really just came down to poor management and really just terrible coaching overall. I mean, Doug Peterson handled the Jalen Hurts, Carson Wentz situation horribly. He put Jalen Hurts in for one passing play, took him out. It was just really odd stuff. And then he openly benched Hurts on the last game in order to tank. You know, a lot of teams tank, but not they don't make it that obvious. I mean, even the players were upset about it, which is just like you don't want to see your own players being, being upset about tanking and something of that nature. Um, but I really like Jalen Hurts a lot. I feel like you could build around him. I just think that they need a, they need a lot more uh, talent on both sides of the uh, ball. But I think I like what you hit on, um, how they paid a lot of veterans a lot of money. I think they really got to get off the books because um, they're they're in deep cap trouble uh, trouble with all the money they're paying. Um, if they trade Carson Wentz, it's uh, they're going to absorb a lot of dead money, which is never a positive thing. And then if you keep them, it's just like, why are you going to keep them if, you know, you think Hurts is the future? Um, but maybe they can work out a deal with, like, the Bears or Colts where they kind of absorb some of that money, um, something like that. It usually happens with uh, big contract players. But overall, Eagles had a disappointing year. But I, I honestly feel like it's not hopeless because I really feel like Hurts can be something special. Yeah, that was well said. I forgot about that benching thing, which was really low on the scale. Also, another thing I want to mention is, that Darius Slay, that worked out terribly. I was super excited, and I'm like, yes, let's go. We got him. And then it was like, oh, I don't know if it's his fault or not. Anyways, Eagles need a lot of work. Going on to the Washington football team, before this season, I was really high on this team, and that kind of came true and kind of didn't. Their defense was really great. Ron Rivera, I love this coaching staff. They did a lot of great things. And I, you know, Chase Young is good. He's pretty nice. There's a lot of other players on this defense. And I like the way they played. The Washington football team did have some big um, games and on their schedule, but I felt like they were never blown out. Even when they lost, it was never by like 40 points. The only game I can think of is really Baltimore, but that's just kind of how it goes. But Besides the defense, which I thought was good overall, I like this offense, and I think there's a really strong base here. You have Terry McLaurin, who's an absolute beast. He is a fantastic player, and I think a lot of teams could use him as a number one. Logan Thomas was really good for a tight end, and Antonio Gibson is nice. If you can build off of that with a good quarterback and maybe one more wide receiver to help scary Terry, I'm really liking where this team is going. Uh, This Washington football team this past season reminds me of the Dolphins two years ago. Two years ago, the Dolphins won like five, six games, but 
during that stretch, they beat teams like the Eagles and Colts and the Patriots in Week 17, and they showed some signs of hope, and that's kind of the vibe I get from Washington. Um, Washington, I feel like they kind of ranked where I thought they I had them pre-year, but I, if anything, they kind of like met more of my expectations just because – um, Ron Rivera, I really love that. I really loved him um, this year. I feel like he was a fantastic coach because he had to deal with Dwayne Haskins. He had to deal with Alex Smith coming back. He had a really weird quarterback situation that was pretty unique this year compared to like most other teams. And I feel like he handled it well. You know, Alex Smith came in. He hasn't played a snap in two years. He played pretty well, beat the Steelers, um, put up fights against a lot of teams. And you have uh, – Taylor uh, Heineke, if, sorry if I mispronounced that, but he he uh, made his first career start against the Super Bowl champions, Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and he played phenomenal. Debatably, if not debatably, the best quarterback performance um, this playoffs against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, who did end up winning the Super Bowl, like we, like I said earlier. And this defense is fantastic. You have a lot to build on. And I like what you said, uh, Terry McLaurin, he's an absolute stud, wide receiver one. Um, this guy, this guy's the limit for this guy, Logan Thomas breakout year. And I see a lot of people not talking about this guy, but Antonio Gibson, uh, rookie running back. This guy had a really good year, about 11 touchdowns and he didn't even start, uh, all 16 games. In fact, he started only like 12 or 13, I believe due to injuries and not playing the first couple weeks, but I really like where this team's heading. I think they have a really bright future with that star soda defense and Ron Rivera. Yeah, I agree with you, and I think this team could make the playoffs next season. Going on to the Giants, the last team in the NFC East, um, this team, it's, it's hard for me because there's a lot of things I like. There's a lot of things I don't like. This defense, I think, is good. Joe Judge is smart. He does these film room episodes. Um, where he breaks down film on the Giants YouTube channel. I thought it was done well. And overall, you have some good players on that defense. James Bradbury, as someone who likes the Panthers, he was very good. Same with Lynn Williams. He got better. Like Martinez, you know, I could go on and on about this New York defense. However, the offense, I just don't know. I think Saquon's a bit overrated. Daniel Jones, it seems like he's the same play, and we've seen him for about two full seasons. He makes a good play, but then he has a turnover, which is not like – it's not like hair pulling, but it's just like, ah, oh, if you did one thing better. I've kind of been on the train, if you will, of the Giants should, if they can, drop a top, top quarterback because I think the Jones we see is the Jones we're going to get. This offense, you know, Darius Slayton's good, but you need that number one player. Washington, like we said, has that base with Terry McLaurin, Antonio Gibson. I just don't see that same base here in New York. Um, I think this team is like seven, eight wins. Um, they're going to put up a tough fight, but I don't see them being this ultimate team. Yeah, no, I completely agree with you. I feel like their defense was a big improvement from last year. Uh, James Bradbury, very underrated corner, um, fantastic player. Um, but I like what you said about Daniel Jones as well. I'm not sold on this guy at all. Um, this guy makes way too many mistakes with the ball, and – I mean, I get, I get they're, I guess they're correctable, but I mean, he really hasn't made any improvements since his rookie year, which is really not a good sight to see at all. I mean, like uh, for example, that Buccaneers Monday night game, first half he played phenomenal, like pretty good, one of his best uh, starts to his game, uh, career, uh, career game yet, and then in the second half he throws two straight picks. It's like it's just like the inconsistency with, inconsistency with him is very concerning and I, I agree with you I think if there's a top guy there that you really love you got to go get him because quarterback is a very um it's, it's the most important important position and you got to get the best guy you possibly can and I I think they need more weapons um they missed Saquon Barkley this year really sucks to see him not being able to play really exciting to player to watch always want him to be healthy um but I feel like they got to either get a weapon on offense or just start over with the quarterback yeah, I agree. Um, going to the NFC South, um, all four of these teams I've talked about a lot in my weekly prediction series, so not a lot to say. I will say this about Tampa Bay. It was a really cool team to watch as the season grew on. I feel like the first couple of weeks, okay, they're getting some easy wins um, against Denver, but then you know this Buccaneers team went on to beat 
so many great teams. You have the Packers twice, Drew Brees and the Saints when it matter most, the Chiefs, the Chargers went um, not a fantastic team record wise, but you know, you gotta win off of them. The Raiders are not easy. I just feel like this team improved over the season. That's what you want to see. Um, I like how all these pieces came together. The Buccaneers finally have a good running game. I like the dual threat system. I think that's something other teams can use. The defense was elite. They're Super Bowl champs for a reason. Uh, not a ton else to say. I think that they're going to be a very good team next year. Yeah, not not a lot to say. We kind of covered this team. I mean, there's not much you can say otherwise besides their Super Bowl champions, meaning they're the best team in football. They exceeded my expectations. I did not think they'd be this good right off the bat. But I think the storyline this year for them, if I just had to sum it up, was they're a little inconsistent um, early on in the year. And then towards the end of the year in the playoffs, they just hit a switch. And this team looked unstoppable. I mean, the offense is putting up 30-plus points, and this defense is getting down your – getting down in your face and making you want to uh, throw the ball away or get sacked or throw picks. I mean, th- this team really came together, and their chemistry is phenomenal. Yeah. I'm next up the Panthers. I said this a lot, but they're a young team. Sometimes you're going to have great games, being able to keep up with teams like Kansas City and get some nice wins against some other teams. Also going to result in some losses. I really like this team's offense, um, Robbie Anderson, Curtis Samuel, uh, DJ Moore is really underrated. And this was all with Chris McCaffrey injured. Don't think Teddy's the answer. Defense, Jeremy Chin should have won defensive rookie of the year, in my opinion. Um, for me, the thing with the Panthers is that kind of has me concerned is the coaching. I loved the Matt Rule hire so much when it was happening. I was like, yes. Then this season, there were some questionable moments. However, I think that the Panthers met my expectations. They were a young team, got some nice wins, but also some bad losses. I think you need a new quarterback. Uh, Sam Donald would be my preferred choice. I really like that idea. And just continue growing this team. Yeah, this this team is a very young, exciting team to watch. Some games, then other games, they just get absolutely blown to shreds. Um, But... No, for real. They have a lot of great weapons on offense. I'm a big fan of uh, not really Matt Rule, but I'm a, I really like their offensive coordinator, Joe Brady. Um, I think next uh, offseason we could be talking about him having a head coaching um, position because I think he's that good. Um, their defense, very inconsistent. Um, they really don't have a true corner one. I really love Jeremy Chin this year, though. Fantastic safety. He basically plays linebacker, too. Um, Brian Burns, fantastic young uh, edge rusher. Great, two great pieces you can build around. Just need a couple more. Um, this team's very, like, kind of like rebuilding, but also can make the playoffs if they get enough pieces. And I like what you said about Teddy Bridgewater, too. I see him as a bridge quarterback. Do not think he's the guy for him. He's just way too passive at times. He doesn't make those big plays, you know, where. And I never see a Teddy Bridgewater 50-yard touchdown, you know. It's more like ten dink and dunks, you know. Um, but I think this team has a bright future just because of all the, that talent they have on offense. Um, he does go deep. The thing with Teddy is whenever he tries to do it too many times, he just yeah. – uh, turnovers happen. Um, I agree with what you said. I love Brian Burns. Forgot about him. I know how I can, but really like him. <laughs> Saints. I've gone on the record – Kind of not liking Alvin Kamara, but he was excellent this season. You cannot deny that. Should he have one offense of the play of the year? Nope. Derrick Henry deserves it, but Kamara is still <laughs> excellent, and he really helped the Saints team. I don't think Sean Payton gets a lot of credit at times, and he's very underrated. I mean, this season, Michael Thomas, say what you will about him, he's a good player. He was injured, and the Saints still found a way to win games. I really like this team's defense. I think overall they're a very stable team. They're probably around 10-11 wins. Can they reach the Super Bowl? I don't think so. But, I mean, there's a good base. It depends kind of what happens with Drew Brees. But, I mean, Alvin Kamara it was just excellent, and he was a lot of fun to watch, especially that Vikings game on Christmas so, yeah, that's what I have to say about the Saints. Um, the Saints are an interesting team because I thought they could really do some uh, major damage in the playoffs. I really thought they had a chance at 
winning the Super Bowl because they that offense just looked fantastic at times. Um, the one thing that was really sad to see about this team was Drew Brees kind of like – you could just tell he progressed pretty badly over – this past year or two, um, he really can't get the ball that deep anymore. It looks like a struggle for him to throw past 30 yards, which really sucks to see because, you know, a guy you grow up with, like, oh, Drew Brees, he is so phenomenal. And to see him, like, kind of deteriorate, kind of like the Peyton Mannings of um, and Eli Manning and quarterbacks like that, it just really sucks to see because it's like an end of an era. And uh, I'm, I'm interested to see what he does. I'm, like, 99% sure he's pretty much done. Um, I'm kind of – I'm really excited to see what Jameis Winston does. I feel like he could – him or Taysom Hill, I don't know who's going to be the starting quarterback for him, but I feel like one of those two guys could really stand out just because of all that offensive talent they do have. But, no, they're in a really tricky situation. They have a ton of – they're negative 100 million in cap, which is ridiculous. <laughs> but, um, no, I'm really excited to see what they do in the offseason because I just want to see what this team is looking like because I don't think it's going to look uh, too, like the same. Yeah, next up we have the Falcons. Um Oh, this team. Uh, I'm going to try to finish a thought on, like, this team finishing games, but <laughs> no, man, that's become, oh, no. a, the, <laughs> that's oh, become no. a thing with the Falcons, the blowing leads, and that happened with the Bears, Cowboys, the Lions, and I thought there was another game I'm forgetting. Um, with that being said, though, I feel like Matt Ryan's time is done. There's that one Chargers game, which was just so fun to watch with those two teams, but Matt Ryan looks like he's regressing. Um, I like this offense, though. Julio Jones is one of the best wide receivers. Calvin Ridley, I'm really high on. Um, overall, though, we'll see where this team goes. I do like the Arthur Smith hire with this team. And if I'm Atlanta, I'm looking to get a new quarterback. Um, and, and we'll see kind of how this NFC South goes next year. The Bucks looks like they're going to retain their pieces, but do the Panthers get good? And then the Falcons and Saints, you have your pieces like Camaro of the Saints, as I said, with Michael Thomas. And the Falcons, you have some receivers. But there's a lot of work to be done. So I think this NFC South is going to be really fun to see next year. Yeah, um, this Falcons team really, like, kind of surprised me. I don't, I didn't really have them as, like, a super playoff contender, but I definitely didn't think they'd be the fourth worst team in the NFL um, when you have Matt Ryan, Julio, and Calvin Ridley, I, I just feel like you'd win more games than that. Even Hayden Hurst had a pretty solid year. Um, but I really feel like that kind of um, goes on the uh, coach and the defense. That's secondary, atrocious. Um, you have A.J. Terrell as your corner one, and he's a rookie. And he had a fine year, don't get me wrong, but, I mean, he wasn't a spectacular. And then you really don't have anyone else on the other side of him. And then Dan Quinn, um, like you said, he doesn't know how to keep a lead for some reason. This dude, he couldn't hold it in the Super Bowl. Then he just said, screw it. I can't hold it for the rest of my career, I guess. <laughs> and then, and uh, this team, I think it could I think it could do really well with some good coaching. And I do think it's time to move on from Matt Ryan. I don't know if they want to do a thing where they draft a guy and, and, uh, at fourth overall and have him learn behind Matt Ryan, or if they just want to trade Matt Ryan and go all in in that rookie. I'm just curious to see if they'd be interested in doing that. Yeah, I think they're planning on keeping Ryan, which I, I don't like. But anyways, the NFC West, we'll start off the Seahawks. I feel like the Seattle team has been the same team for like the past four years. Russell Wilson plays great. He has some wide receivers that are really good. This year's DK Metcalf. And the defense has some average players with like two superstars. That's it. And I don't see that changing. If Russell Wilson gets traded, that's going to be huge news. But until then, I just don't see this team winning a Super Bowl. I'm very low on the Seahawks. I just feel like they're the same team year after year. I love Pete Carroll. The guy has his place in Canton. But I feel like it's his time to leave Seattle. I, You know, I wouldn't be surprised if he gets traded to a team or something like that, like the Bengals or something. But, like, I don't know. Pete Carroll, I just don't think him in Seattle are working out. He's trying to run this team this certain way, and I just – don't think it's helping Seattle. So, uh, you know, they'll probably win 10 games next year, but I just don't see this team going to the Super Bowl. Yeah, the Seahawks, at the beginning of the year, it looked like Russell Wilson, MVP candidate, and then he just started going really, like, and they started, like, going down. And, you know, Rodgers took care of that um, business. But, <laughs> I mean, but, you know, Wilson, I, that was just really surprising. I thought he was going to be the – 
uh, unanimous MVP this year just because of how good he was playing. And same with the whole Seahawks. They started 5-0. and Cardinals took him down first uh, first loss of the season, but that was a fantastic game. But um, it just seems like their defense just gives up 30 minutes. Like, as, much, as good as Russell Wilson is, you do not want to put him in a shootout 16 games a year. That's just, like, completely unfair to him. Um, DK Metcalf had a really great year. He missed a lot of crucial catches, though. I feel like he kind of dropped a lot of stuff. That could always improve. But I like what you said about Pete Carroll. When are we going to start holding accountability for the Seahawks team? They – have been they've had Russell Wilson for nine seasons. They've had the Legion of Boom. They've had they have DK Metcalf now, and they have one ring to show for it. I mean, I just feel like you got to step it up. They've only been the the last time they went to the Super Bowl was about seven years ago, which seems crazy to me because it just seems like yesterday. But um, no, this team, I think someone needs to be held accountable because it you can't make the divisional or wild card round every year. You got to improve. Yeah, I agree. These next two teams, I'm gonna talk fast about just because we've talked about them because I want to focus on this one team. 49ers injuries really bogged this team down. With that being said, Kyle Shanahan still did a great job. They were in some games. Hopefully they'll bounce back next year. Cardinals, we've talked about them. There's a podcast episode if y'all want to check that out. Basically, can the coach put this team together? That's why I stand on them. And then the Rams, I was really low in Los Angeles. Um, I thought they were going to be a team that would disappoint most people. And I had them winning only like seven or eight games. But they surprised me, and they made the playoffs and won a game. This offense looked good. I'm excited what they can do with Matt Stafford. I love that trade so much. And their defense is really, really good. Chase Williams, a breakout star. Aaron Donald, defensive player of the year, rightfully so. And Jaron Ramsey was just a shutdown machine. I thought this was probably the best we've seen of Ramsey in his career. I thought he was excellent. I like this Rams branding with the uniforms, the stadium. Um, so that's what I have to say about the NFC West. I think this is out of the Colonels or Rams to take next season. Yeah, jumping on the <clears throat> 49ers, I feel like there's not a lot to say because they were riddled with so many injuries. It's so hard to judge them this year, but Kyle Shanahan is a fantastic coach um he he's really making himself known in the league more and more each year um especially what he did with like basically no Kittle or uh, Jimmy G for most of the year um Cardinals we talked about him like you said one thing to hit on very inconsistent that comes down to a lot of coaching mistakes um not holding guys accountable not being enough not enough discipline that in the locker room slash practice uh practice days just need more consistency. And I think this is Cliff's proof year. Doesn't get it done. He's gone. Sorry, Cliff. Um, Rams, I like what you said as well about them being um, kind of like a, a shocking team because I really didn't have them making playoffs. But they really played well towards the end of the year. They beat the Seahawks. Um, they beat the Cardinals with uh, John Wolford. And then they went on to beat the Seahawks again in the playoffs. And this team, uh, Jalen Ramsey especially, he showed so much heart in those last couple of games because, like, I don't know, I just – like, Jalen Ramsey's always been, like, a guy who plays a lot of heart, but it just, for some reason, that team just played with so much passion towards the end of the year, and it really showed, which is why they uh, made the playoffs and even won a game with a broken Jared Goff thumb and no Cooper Cup. And, I mean, just fantastic stuff. And uh, I really like the Stafford uh, trade, too. It's it's just showing that they're, they're putting all their uh, chips on the table. They want to win now. Yeah, I agree. I really love the Stafford trade. I also forgot to mention Cooper Cup. Really great player. So moving on to the NFC North. Um, not a lot to say about these NFC teams. I feel like a lot of kind of stuff happened how I thought. Um, the Packers were great. I really loved them. Seeing Aaron Rodgers in his prime again was fantastic. The way he was extending plays, it was just so cool to watch. Devontae Adams is fantastic. Probably the top two wide receiver, I think, is either him or Hopkins. Um, but, you know, he was great. I just think the Green Bay narrative, as so many people have said, is give Rodgers some help. Um, I think also their defense could use some help. But I think they also have improved. Um, there's a lot of young talent on that team. You know, they lost in the NFC Championship game, which is unfortunate. 
if you're a fan of the team. But, you know, two NFC Championship losses in a row, that's not good. But I think next year or so they can make it to the Super Bowl. And I think Matt LaFour is a good coach, and I think that he's very dedicated to this Packers team. Yeah, the Packers, they played uh, phenomenal. I mean, I mean, the Packers played phenomenal. I mean, Aaron Rodgers and Devontae Adams played out of this world. You have, and you also have the addition of Robert Tunyon. Um, he played – he had a breakout year. Um, Packers run defense struggled at times. Um, they just really got to improve on that aspect. I really like Jair Alexander, fantastic corner. Um, he played fantastic this year, um, really high on him. But I think the biggest storyline out of this year from the Packers is why the heck did you draft Jordan Love in that first round? You could have gotten Rodgers some type of help anywhere on that offense, and it would have been a better addition than Jordan Love, in my personal opinion. Um, especially when you have Rodgers playing at an MVP level, it's just like, what could have been? You guys are six point, or excuse me, eight or nine points away. I forgot what the score was of that Buccaneers game. I think away. it was a touchdown. Would have yeah. Given the lead. Touchdown, a touchdown away from being in the um, the Super Bowl. It's just like, what could have been? Like, you, you got to get Rodgers help. It's like, what are you guys doing? Um, Yeah, I like the love pick. I know that's unpopular, but I like it. I don't love it. I don't hate it. I think it's good talent. What gets me is the rest of the draft. They got like A.J. Dillon, some Josiah DeGora. I'm like, what's going on? You know, it's, that, that part to me was not good. Um, I'm excited to see how this team plays next year. They have teams like Baltimore up on the schedule, Cleveland, um, the Rams, teams that can really run the ball. So, as you said, the run defense was iffy, and they will get tested. Moving on to Minnesota, this team was great to watch um, because they kind of came back. They were a team that was winless. Um, Ben complained a lot about them on the podcast, if you all remember those early season episodes. And they kind of turned around. I think all that has to do with Justin Jefferson. The dude has so much great energy and infectious. He's also a fantastic player. I really like him. Him with Dalvin Cook, who I think is a top two running back, um, as well as Adam Phelan is great. I think to keep Kirk Cousins for one more year, I've always liked Kirk more than most, and I think you give him um, at least one more opportunity. The defense is an issue, and we talked about the Pete Carroll episode, and I think Mike, Zim- Mike Zimmer might be in that boat where you got to hold these guys accountable. But, yeah, that's what I have to say about Minnesota. The season started out bad, but they it got good, and they – you got to give them credit where credit is due for that. Um, I feel like this Vikings team is eerily similar to the Falcons team this year. You have, Ooh. You, have two, you have two fantastic receivers on both teams, two quarterbacks who aren't the best at what they do, but they can still get the job done. Um, actually, I think her cousin has a, had a very underrated year. He played actually really well towards the end. Not, not very good in the beginning, but he really stepped it up. Um, Justin Jefferson, debatably the best rookie year um, from a receiver ever. Dalvin Cook career year. You just have two um, stellar offenses really torn down by um, some head coaching problems as well as the defense really not being able to hold their own. Um, I really like this Vikings team for the future, though, just solely because of Dalvin Cook and Jefferson. Those guys are – that you can build around them. You really can. And even Thielen is a fantastic player who who I don't really see slowing down anytime soon I just really think you really got to upgrade that defense oh and one player on the defense I really do love is Daniil Hunter that guy is fantastic um he's a franchise defensive player I think you got a really good pieces on both sides you just got to put it together he was injured this year right Hunter yeah he was injured for a lot of the year yeah um that de- defense was weird because they brought in like Michael Pierce from the Ravens but then he opted out then they had Yannick and Gagwe which was oof no, um, and then no Xavier Rhodes, so they had young corners. Like Harrison Smith played good. A lot of people love Eric Kendricks. I think he's pretty great. Um, so, yeah, I think we summed up the Vikings pretty well. Next season they play a lot of good teams, um, you know, with great offenses, Baltimore, Cincinnati, Cleveland, Arizona. So we'll see if they can keep up. Um, the Bears were a weird team because they started out undefeated. They're – um, offense looked 
good um ish but their defense was playing really high and then their offense crashed and but then they kind of merged together at the end of the season it was a really odd year i've never seen anything like this from a team not even in madden franchise it was really weird um i like this defense i think that's a bit overrated yes cleo max a top 10 defensive talent but you know people say he's like this best player ever I think a tear down for me. Um, I do like him though. This offense without Allen Robinson, that's where the issues are going to be prominent. I could see the Bears having a five, six, ten win season. I think this draft they go offensive line, but I think next draft that's where they get a quarterback and kind of restart. And then the Lions, I'm excited for the Dan Campbell era. Not a lot to say about this season. Typical Lions uh, fashion, win games you shouldn't. Like that Cardinals game, but then lose games you shouldn't. It was, you know, the Lions are so blah. Um, I think Jared Goff will do good things, but overall, um, that's what I have to say about the NFC North and the NFC. Yeah, the Bears, very tricky team, very mediocre as they come. Um, as uh, Steele, my good friend, said, it was a charity playoff spot that they were given. <laughs> Um, they were they deserving? Yeah, but I mean, they really didn't do much because they just don't have enough talent. Quarterback situation is very yucky. Um, do not like it. You got Nick Foles paying him a ton of money to do absolutely nothing. Then they want to bring in Carson Wentz. It's just, it's just weird. I don't, I don't understand what the Bears are doing. And I said this on my podcast. I said the Bears have two to three great years left with this defense, but I don't see the offense bringing their talent coming up to the defensive level. So I feel like they got to blow it up in some ways. Keep keep some young defensive players, you know, like Roquan Smith, Eddie Jackson. I'd keep Khalil Mack, but like, you know, Hakeem Hicks, Kyle Fuller, those are guys you might have to move because they're getting up there in age and you just – you really kind of need to rebuild because you don't have much money and you don't have a quarterback. Then quickly on the Lions, they're not good. <laughs> it's just as simple <laughs> as it is. Matt Patricia, horrible head coaching hire. Oh, yeah. Um, I like where they're heading, though. They're rebuilt. They finally blew it up. They're rebuilding. Goff, I don't really understand it, but we'll see how it works out for them. Yeah, I'm excited for the Jared Goff trade. And Dan Campbell seems like a lot of fun. Anyways, all, that will do it for this episode of Man to Man Coverage Podcast. And if you stuck around to the end, Mason and I are trying to get some NFL players on the show. I know it's a big, big dream, but it is something that could be done. So the support helps. And if y'all have any suggestions, let us know. We're probably going to get like a Mahomes, Brady, Rogers, but <laughs> any players that you think would be cool, let us know. Until then, take care and peace.